Hello, and welcome to Staying Awake. I have a sleeping disorder. I can't tell the difference between my waking life and dream. Hey there, quirky people. March has been offering us some pretty cool content through and through. Things started off with Vengeance pulling us all to the theaters while he took on the Riddler. I'm just trying to reach you. Find the God! Then, Netflix brought back Uhtred to finally take over The Last Kingdom. The Atom Project also proved to be a pretty heartwarming time travel story. This is happening to me. It already happened to you, right? Unless it works more like a multiverse where each world oh, creates an alternate time. A multiverse? My God, we watch too many movies. Meanwhile, Turning Red has been turning the heat on Disney+. Plus. OMG! Ultimately, the month will end with the arrival of MCU's Moon Knight. While March has been pretty cool in terms of content, I can bet that April will prove to be as thrilling, if not better. All about that hustle, am I right? There are plenty of amazing movies and shows headed our way throughout April. So without any further ado, let's begin our crusade for the entire month. First up, we've got Morbius. I've personally been waiting for this movie for almost two years now. Jared Leto was supposed to turn into a vampire all the way back in July 2020. But now finally, he'll glide into the theaters and expand Sony's Spider-Man universe. Morbius is not as big as Venom, but he could prove to be as surprising as the big black symbiote. What if I can't? Michael Keaton will reprise his role as Birdman. Oh no, not this one. He'd somehow return as Adrian Toomes from the MCU. I don't know how that is supposed to happen. You're making me beat up grass! But along with him, I'm really hoping for Andrew Garfield to jump into this universe as Spider-Man 2. People cheered when he arrived in No Way Home. Hi. Hi. So I'm assuming that he could have the same impact if he shows up in Morbius on April 1st. On the same day, Netflix is bringing us The Bubble. This is a comedy movie showcasing the troubles of making a big budget feature in a secured bio bubble. Now that was a great take. Pedro Pascal, Karen Gillan, and Keegan Michael Key are amongst the big name actors starring in the film. They'd be playing actors who are stuck in a hotel trying to wrap an action movie sequel. Stop being Benedict Cumberbatch. That is based on a franchise of flying dinosaurs. Director Judd Apatow is the one who helmed this visually stylistic comedy. Following the bubble will be Moon Knight. Yes, I know that Oscar Isaac will make his debut on March 31st, but we'll be getting the next four episodes from April 6th to April 28th. It's been quite a while since we've got the last MCU Disney Plus series. And now, we're quite excited that Marvel will be launching their own version of a Batman-like vigilante. Thanks. But don't make the mistake of thinking that Moon Knight is a Batman ripoff. This White Knight is so much more. His split personality disorder will keep us hooked throughout. What's wrong with you, Mark? Why did you call me Mark? And we'll also be getting a regular dose of some dark and brutal action sequences. So you've got to be excited for Moon Knight. But right after watching this superhero entry, we'd get to enjoy Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Paramount's first Sonic the Hedgehog totally surprised everyone by being super amazing. So, a sequel to the film was fast-tracked in a moment. Uh, boy. Someone call an Uber? This time, Sonic the Speedster will be teaming up with Tails the Fox. I just hope we are not too late. Oh lord, there are two of them now. And he would be battling Knuckles the Echidna, who is voiced by none other than Idris Elba. Space Porcupine. Oh! I am an Echidna warrior. But that's not it. Jim's Carrie Eggman turned out to be the highlight of part one. And even though he was left stranded on a mushroom planet, I'll be home by Christmas. We'd see him return to take his vengeance upon Sonic on April 8th. On the same day, Netflix will be releasing the Korean film, Yaksha, Ruthless Operations. K-dramas are slowly taking over the world as Korean cinema is doing wonders. And Netflix has now become a huge factor in showcasing their immense talent across the globe. 2021 had several successful projects like Space Sweepers, Squid Game, Hellbound, and others. Now, we are getting a spy thriller where a prosecutor will be caught in a deadly war of spies. Then on April 8th itself, we'll also be getting Ambulance. 
Michael Bay has directed this action thriller with Jake Gyllenhaal in the lead. He is joined by Yahya Abdul-Mateen II and Isa Gonzalez. This is another heist film as a decorated veteran teams up with his adoptive brother to steal $32 million from a Los Angeles bank. But things go horribly wrong on their exit. So they improvise by hijacking an ambulance that's carrying a severely wounded cop and an EMT worker. Now, it'll be interesting to see if the cop would survive with the heist being successful. Next up, Disney Plus brings us Ice Age Scrap Tales. For the last two decades, we've enjoyed watching Scrap playing around with his nuts. Okay, that sounded wrong. Let me rephrase it. We've seen this squirrel trying to bust open a nut battling cold winters. Ugh, what is happening? I know you understand what I mean. But did you know that Scrat is returning for a series of six new animated shorts? And this time, he'd be battling fatherhood while his baby Scrat plays around with his nut. Okay, I'm sorry. I really need to take a no-not policy. I say Scrat Tales will go completely nuts on April 13th. And following him in the theaters will be Fantastic Beasts, The Secrets of Dumbledore. Finally, after almost four years, we are getting the next installment of the Fantastic Beasts franchise. After leaving us on the Aurelius Dumbledore cliffhanger, Fantastic Beasts 3 went through a lot of problems behind the scenes. The crimes of Grindelwald wasn't as successful, so the creatives really had to work out a better narrative. Then, COVID put a halt on things. Johnny Depp had to move out after filming began, and the studio had to pay him his entire $10 million fee for filming just one scene. Then they cast Mads Mikkelsen as the manipulative wizard, and now we're finally getting FB3 on April 15th. Let's hope that a few secrets of Dumbledore will shock the world. Next up, we've got The Northman. We've been enjoying watching Vikings on Netflix through Ohala and The Last Kingdom. Who wants to be king? But on April 22nd, we're gonna get an epic action-filled movie in the theaters. It follows a young Viking prince on his quest to avenge his father's murder. I'm gonna avenge you, father! I'm gonna save you, mother! I'm gonna kill you, Fiona! And we've got to be excited for its cast as Alexander Skarsgård plays the lead. He'll be joined by other familiar actors like Ethan Hawke, Anya Taylor-Joy. Nicole Kidman, and William Frickin' Defoe. Alongside The Northman, we're getting the unbearable weight of massive talent movie. For years, most films of Nicolas Cage have blown hot and cold. But every now and then, he comes up with movies that totally shock the world. He starred in Mandy back in 2018. And last year, he surprised us all with Pig. Now he's coming up with a comedy where he plays a version of himself. It was a tremendous honor to be a part of storytelling. Ah, fuck, man, I'm driving through the hills. I'm sorry, one more time. Being nearly broke, he accepts a million dollar offer to attend a wealthy fan's birthday party. I am Khalid. Nick Cage. And that's where the craziness gets unleashed. It's grotesque. I'll give you 20,000 for it. The film has a 100% rating on Rotten Tomatoes to start things off. This number might go down as more reviews come in, but I believe that his pairing with Pedro Pascal will prove to be really fruitful. It could be the best Nick Cage movie in years. Are those my golden guns? They're my golden guns. I don't want to kill you. You're the last person I want to kill. I love you. I love you. Towards the end of April, we'll get to see Memory. Liam Neeson recently starred in Black Light, and now he's coming up with another thriller called Memory. This time, Guy Pearce would be there playing FBI agent Vincent Serra. Over the years, we've seen Neeson play several assassins. And guess what? He plays yet another expert assassin called Alex Lewis in memory. He gets caught up in an ugly situation where he refuses to complete a job that violates his code. I don't hurt children, ever. Listen to me very carefully. The code stays alive. And now he has to hunt down the ones who hired him before Vincent gets to him. But the twist in the tale is that old age has caught up to him and his memory begins to falter. It's mine. Anything else I can do for you? The room number again? It's on the key holder. Ah. With blurring glimpses of the past, Alex is forced to question his every action. And that's where the thrill lies. 
Memory arrives on April 29th, and on the same day, Netflix will launch Ozark Season 4 Part 2. The final part of Netflix's hit money laundering series is ready to bring back the Bird family. So far, Marty Bird has managed to survive and keep things relatively under control. Okay, maybe things have not been under control at all. But at least Marty has kept his family whole so far. Now it will be interesting to see whether he could pass his final test with Javi going out of his way to create new problems, and Ralph going after him for a good old fashioned revenge. Okay, that is all for April. Tell us which of these projects excite you the most. Smash the like and subscribe buttons. And don't forget to check out some more fun content on our channel. Thank you and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye and stay quirky.